If you had asked me a couple months ago whether Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference would actually happen, I wouldn't have known what to tell you. Big in-person events, including software-heavy shows like Google I.O., were being canceled left, right, and center, so WWDC seemed like the next logical victim. But no. Apple confirmed it was going ahead with an online-only version of the show for the first time ever, really, and it starts very soon. The keynote begins at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern on June 22nd, and we will be covering it live as always. Now, even if the staging is completely different this year, all of the rumors suggest we're in for a really big show. In fact, for reasons having nothing to do with COVID-19, we could be looking at one of the most impactful WWDCs ever. And that all starts with what Apple is reportedly doing in iOS 14. For one, the nature of the iOS home screen could be changing for the first time since the home screen was a thing. Sure, you'll be able to look at that classic grid of apps, same as always, but apparently you'll also be able to view a list of your apps, which sounds a little Android-y to me, and I mean that in the most flattering way possible. iOS always could have benefited from something like this. Speaking of android -y, rumors also suggest that at long last, we might be able to put real, movable widgets on our home screens. Throw in support for third-party wallpaper packs, which is a weird idea, I know, and we may wind up with a version of iOS that looks and feels a lot different than what you're used to. There's word you may even be able to set third-party apps as the defaults for emails and web browsing, but since the conversation around that has sort of died down since Bloomberg broke the news in February, I'm a little more skeptical of that iOS 14 may also have more of a focus on augmented reality than usual. Apple has reportedly been working on a new app codenamed Gobi that displays information in places like Apple stores and Starbucks when you point it at an Apple made QR code so you could feasibly see nutritional information or store availability for products. That feels a little questionable now since we probably shouldn't spend too much time inside stores with strangers, but don't worry. Apple may also let you do things like search for your missing AirPods using augmented reality. There are some other interesting tidbits that might wind up in iOS 14 that we should talk about, like improved messaging. According to Mac Rumors, Apple is working on a mention system for iMessage, so you could nudge specific people in your group chat and retract messages after you've sent them. Safari may automatically translate websites in other languages, sort of like Chrome does now. And Apple might also reveal a new fitness app that allows people to download guided workout videos, which seems bizarre and kind of brilliant at the same time. I could definitely see Apple taking away money from services like Peloton through something like this. Now, Apple obviously uses iOS as a foundation for iPadOS, so the improvements we've just talked about will almost certainly make their way to iPads too, but we have heard of a few noteworthy tablet-specific features. 9 to 5 Mac spotted references to new cursors and gestures, which should be great news for anyone trying to use an iPad with a mouse or a trackpad. We've also heard you'll be able to use your Apple Pencil beyond just your note-taking and sketching apps. If these rumors hold true, you'll be able to write with the pencil in any text field, which iPadOS will recognize and convert into traditional text, which is frankly long overdue. Samsung's Galaxy Note has been able to do this for quite some time. Still, I'm looking forward to seeing if iPads and the Apple Pencil can help this concept succeed where the Newton failed with it years ago. Now, 2020 has been weird for like a thousand different reasons, but if Apple sticks to the playbook it's been using for years, developers or people like me who just pay for developer accounts will be able to install previews of both of these new updates shortly after the keynote ends. Then we've got watchOS 7, which comes with a bunch of new watch faces, as it always does, but more important are new features, like a so-called kids mode that let mom or dad manage an Apple Watch for their kids in addition to their own from a single iPhone. Those parents will apparently be able to control the apps and complications kids have access to during the day, as well as manage the contacts and music available to them. That sounds great if you're a parent, but I'm still not sold on giving a kid an Apple Watch in the first place. Y'all do you, you who raised your kids have a great time with it. I am personally more excited about the health related changes Apple seems to be making here. After years of waiting, proper sleep tracking is expected to make its debut in watchOS, and so will new measurements for blood oxygen detection, which can be hugely important because low blood oxygen can be a symptom of some incredibly unpleasant conditions. 
We're also hearing that watchOS 7's electrocardiogram feature is said to be more nuanced, which I am personally very grateful for. I've never talked about this before, but I was doing a work thing in California last year and I was working in bed one day and my heart started doing this jazz drum solo and the Apple Watch did help confirm that, yeah, something's wrong with your ticker, you should probably go to a doctor. Having a more accurate tool like that is going to benefit literally anyone. In any case, watchOS 7 is shaping up to be a pretty big update that we might not see the full value of that software until Apple releases new Apple Watches. Now, strangely, there hasn't been a whole lot of noise about Mac OS this year, and that might be because for the first time, Apple has more important Mac hardware announcements to make. And I'm not just talking about that new, heavily rumored iMac either, though that should be cool. Rumor has it Apple went with a very bezel-like design, more in line with the iPad Pro or its expensive Pro Cinema XDR display, and that the company is going all in on SSD storage and embracing the AMD Navi GPU. Great. But if there's one bit of news to keep your eyes peeled for at WWDC, it's Apple's rumored announcement that it's going to transition to using ARM-based processors instead of the Intel stuff the company has been relying on since early 2006. Because of that reliance, the timing of new Mac hardware wasn't purely within Apple's control. Anytime Intel suffered a delay, Apple did too. If this transition pans out, Apple would only be beholden to the company that makes the chips for them. Based on what we've seen from Apple's stupidly fast iPad Pro chipsets like the A12X and A12Z, it does not seem like pure power is going to be the problem. When I reviewed the most recent iPad Pro, it more or less hosed my work MacBook Pro in most of the processor-heavy tasks I threw at them. In terms of complex micro-design, Apple is very good at what it does, but if Apple really is going all arm across its Macs, it needs to give developers time to sort out their work. Best case scenario, they can just recompile some code and they're all set, but worst case scenario, they run into serious compatibility issues and that porting takes ages, or they decide the process isn't worth it and just discontinue their software. We'll just have to wait and see what Apple says, and more importantly, what resources it could provide to make this potential transition as smooth as possible. For all of those reasons, and perhaps more that we're just not privy to yet, it really does seem like WWDC 2020 is shaping up to be one for the books. Thank you for taking the time to run through what we expect to see from the show so far, and be sure to stay tuned for our live coverage when the Apple WWDC keynote starts next week.